our group looks particularly at uh, protein structures, um, calculating the, the 3D structures of them, then look at, looking at how those are then used within the body. There's a, there's a whole load of biology that's all based around, around proteins. So uh, as a quick, quick bit of introduction, as I thought, uh, most of you are probably not biologists. Um, yeah, the whole of your your body, any bits of biology, is all is all about proteins. It's either made out of proteins or made by them. Uh, they're very large biological molecules that have a very complex three D shape, and the the shape determines their function. Um, you know, they're often sort of thought of as Lego type molecules made up of of little building blocks assembled together into a a large structure. Um, each of those blocks is an amino acid that's translated from DNA, uh, much as we've just been, been hearing about. Um, so a, any protein is a, is a long linear molecule that then folds up into a complex 3D shape, um, which a actually is a bit more like you know, the kids' toys you suddenly had of a sort of snake that you could fold around in different ways to make different shapes out of. Proteins are, are, are really quite like that, but uh, rather than having just the, the, the unit's all the same shape. If you imagine there's, there's 20 different amino acids that are, that are coded for by, by our DNA. Um, so if you've got sort of 20 different colored blocks, each of which are a slightly different shape, um, but with a fair amount of flexibility in them, you can see how those would uh, then fold up from a long, a long thin molecule, wrap around into a, into a, complex, into a complex shape. So, Proteins are, are synthesized from DNA via RNA and translation. Um, as, you, as you've just been hearing about in the previous talk, there's a, a huge amount of, of, of DNA um, and that codes for, for proteins. Each gene in the, the, the human genome codes for a, for a different protein. There's about 20,000 different, different proteins that are coded for in, in humans. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those are made by a uh, sort of molecular machine that, that goes along a, a strand of, of RNA and adds amino acid units together to produce this, this long molecule. That's an amazing bit of uh, sort of machinery that's just a, a few single large proteins. Again, uh, the DNA codes for the proteins that reproduce the DNA as well as perform pretty much all the other functions in the in the body. <coughs> um, proteins uh, catalyze chemical reactions or all, all your metabolism is is basically to do with proteins. They form cell structures and uh, they form all the control systems that are within the body. Um, so effectively sort of valves and switches and uh, so this Hugely complicated looking molecule at the bottom here is a part of a, of a cell wall with a protein going through it, which forms a, what's called an ion channel. So there's a, a gap through the middle of the protein that lets different ions in or out of the cell, uh, but only certain ones, and maybe turned on or off by getting a control signal from another molecule coming in. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of complexity there. Uh, this kind of representation of uh, a protein sort of looking like uh, spirals and lots of spaghetti uh, is a sort of simplified representation of it if I back up a couple of slides. So uh, th this kind of representation for, for simplicity so that you can see some of the structure, but the actual molecule is hugely complex, but you, you, you can't sort of really see the structure of what's going on in that. But uh, so we, we used to sort of thinking of, of chemicals of having sort of a, a, a few dozen atoms in them perhaps, but uh, proteins have got thousands. So they're, they're, they're very large, complex molecules, but, but are produced from, through a very mechanistic way from DNA. So it's all based, the, there's a very heavy data centric model of how they're produced. Uh, we know the DNA codes now through sequencing. 
um, and how that's translated into amino acids. So we can take any, any bit of genetic code, you, you know what gene that, uh, you, the, the, the relevant part of it, a particular gene, what sequence of amino acids that will code. But then how you <coughs> take that bit of information and see what the, the, the biological relevance of it is and relies on finding the, the three-dimensional structure of that protein molecule. And that's uh, definitely non-trivial. Um, you know, thinking about it like the kid's toy snake again, um, whereas that was fairly constrained in they were all the same shape and it can only lock in certain positions. Uh, a protein molecule is quite flexible and you've got 20 different types of bases. Um, so the, the, the structure that it produces is complex, but is determined by that sequence of, of amino acids. A, a given sequence of amino acids will always fold up in the same way, but each sequence will fold up in a different way. So how you predict that, that complex shape is, is difficult. And you need to know what that shape is because that determines how it interacts with, with other chemicals in the body, in the environment. Um, particular interest in, in drugs and how the proteins interact with drug molecules. So uh, our research is particularly looking at taking not just predicting a single protein, which we've been able to do in a, in a sort of one-off basis for a while, but using HPC systems to do that many, many times across all the genes in a, in a species, so 20,000 times in a, in a human. Um, each of those individual genes um, will often have several different mutations or genetic variations which might change the, the function of that, of that protein slightly but, but noticeably. So that, that gives you many more different, different proteins that you want to model. And then you, you want to look at how those interact with thousands, tens of thousands of different chemicals that could be potential drugs or might be found in the environment. So that quickly adds up to something that's not just a, a single problem, but a sort of a large set of, of runs that you'd want to do in, a, in an HPC environment. So one particular technique we use is called homology modeling. That's a, of getting the, the 3D structure of a protein, which is difficult to calculate uh, sort of from, from first principles. But there, there are structures known of, of proteins that have been determined experimentally by X-ray crystallography and techniques like that. So there's databases of known uh, crystal structures of proteins. So you can search your protein of interest, the, take the, the sequence uh, the, the amino acid sequence and search for similar looking sequences in the PDB database and find ones that are similar and then use those as templates for assigning a structure to your to your protein of interest so you might you might find a few that are that are quite similar say the green and the blue one there and then uh, <coughs> align those and take bits of them that that fit with your structure and produce a, a model of your particular protein of, of of interest um, and, and that works for these days over half perhaps sort of 60 percent of, of proteins certainly in a human where they're fairly well characterized perhaps less in an obscure bacteria um, but but that's quite quite easy and reasonably quick um, let's say it's, it's perhaps sort of a, a, a few hours four to six hours per protein uh, CPU hours so it's something you could reasonably do on a desktop in a, in a reasonable length of time. It, it takes that long because you, you're still looking at uh, comparing your sequence with databases of perhaps 100,000 other sequences and then um, uh, aligning those 3D structures and create then let, letting the, the, there's an energy minimization kind of step that uh, collates it into, into one single structure. But uh, what do you do for the 40% for the that you can't calculate that way because there isn't a close, already known uh, template to use? Uh, we use a technique called threading, which rather than using single large templates that cover the whole of the protein, 
break it up into much smaller functional units. So the sort of each of those particular bits of helices that you can see there might be a different um, sort of fragment template. Um, and because that uses much smaller parts and has to do much sort of more thorough searching, takes longer, and then there's a much more complicated process of assembling those together in a, in a coherent way. It's not just the, the small scale structure that matters, but the large overall scale uh, structure of the whole protein. <clears throat> uh, and that's much more time consuming and perhaps sort of a, a few hundred CPU hours. So even running at, uh, at HPC scale, that still takes a very long time if you're wanting to do a, a significant chunk of a, of a whole genome. So that, that's where we've been working with the, the research software engineers to streamline that code. It's, it had originally been written, um, not here, but it's a, a, an available sort of tool set for that. But it was written around doing a, a, single, a single run and written to be I suppose con convenient to, to assemble the tool rather than um, quick to, to run. So the research software engineers had looked at that and found that actually the, the, each node was spending an awful lot of time just waiting for other tasks and some of them were took much longer than others and were leaving just sort of a, a lot of unused space with, ju with just CPUs idling. So rewrote that to, to reduce the, the idling time. Um, that. Um, which, which included using a uh, sort of, sort of a meta queue to write a, a sort of queuing scheduling system within each slurm job. Uh, and that achieved much better utilization of the, of the system. So, so that's been a big improvement. So there's about twice the throughput now uh, of that without sort of rewriting code at a at a low level of just scheduling it better. So yeah, so about about two times the the improvement with that. Uh, another area that we then move on to going back to to this slide. Once you've got a protein structure, then how it interacts with other chemicals um, is a technique we call docking, where you, you take a protein structure and find where small molecules will fit into it in a sort of lock and key type way. <coughs> Whether they're drugs that you're hoping will interact with a particular protein to provide some therapeutic effect, or whether they might be toxins that you're hoping won't interact with, with something. So there you're wanting to, to do a, a, a simpler, smaller calculation, but uh, potentially many, many times. So you've got perhaps thousands of proteins and thousands of chemicals, so millions of, of computations, each of which might only take a minute or so, but overall gives you a very large problem set. Uh, and that's a different kind of HPC problem to, to a lot of the ones that we've been talking about today, where rather than a, a single large problem that you need to split up into lots of small sections with parallelization techniques, we've, we've got... Um, <coughs> Fantastic. It's, it's often called embarrassingly parallel in uh, computer science circles, which, which sort of belittles it a bit. But you've got um, several million small jobs which you, you need to run, uh, and how you, you schedule all of those. Um, it can be a bit like a, a large construction project, that uh, if, if you sort of run one on a laptop, think, oh, that runs okay, I'll, I'll just do a million of them now. Um, it's a bit like saying, you yeah, I'll try building a garden wall, but I want to make some huge construction. Right, I'll order a million bricks and a thousand labourers and turn up on Monday morning and hope that everything's running and just need to wait for it and find that sort of all the delivery lorries are jammed in the driveway, backed up all the way through town. All the labourers have gone home because there's only one toilet and there's a huge queue for the cafe and it, and it just all falls apart. You need, you need more organisation uh, and infrastructure to handle all of that data in and out. So you'd, you'd organise a site compound and, and schedule deliveries and uh, dedicated teams for doing bits of the work. So the same software infrastructure for, for this kind of problem that you need to uh, <coughs> uh, get scripts to batch up problems, to create all the arrays of input files, 
split them up into sections that can be submitted to an HBC queue in, a, in an orderly way, um, optimise how, how you run those, whether you try and run, run them as wider jobs across several CPU nodes that run very quickly sequentially, or keep them as well, single CPU jobs, but just many of them in parallel. Uh, it, it tends to be many in parallel for, for the particular code that we're running. Um, and then how you, you collate and organise all the results afterwards. Um, if you do a big, a big run that just dumps a million files into one directory on the file system, then the file system grinds to a halt and the, the sysadmins get uh, slightly upset. <laughs> so you need to find better ways of organising that, um, whether it's doing it in batches and then uh, post-processing those results as each batch goes through, because that's the other thing, on a, on a sort of individual basis, um, you, you might load a result up on your laptop, look at it manually, find, uh, find the areas of interest and, and look at it that way, but you need to find automated, scripted ways of extracting the elements of interest or finding the areas, doing statistical analysis of it uh, across large batches of, of files. But, but doing it at that sort of HPC scale give, gives you benefits that rather than just looking at single cases, you can look at, uh, you can look at them on a statistical basis as well. Say, how does this particular interaction compare with all the others for that protein? Or how does this drug interact with all the proteins in the human body? What might be side effects? What might be uh, potential new uses for the same drug? And then we've, we've also done some work on writing user interfaces on post-processing the, the results off the back of that to, to make them more, more available to biologists who, who aren't HPC specialists. Told them now about out of time, so uh, that's, that's that sort of as a, as a summary. We can uh, d do things on a much wider scale, look at a, a, whole, a whole genome at a time um, and, and get much more useful results than, than just doing individual ones. And, and it has been helpful working with the software engineers to, to improve that, that workflow. Okay. Um, the, the, the genes in the genome sort of fit together with space between them, but when you've got sequencing reads, they would be broken up into different sections that, that don't line up with genes, and that's where you need a lot of overlap between them to, to assembly a continuous sequence. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that's like no question possible. Right, I'll hand over to Gerda Lucini once more for some closing remarks and announce the closing advice.